listening to Fresh Air Community Radio, KFAI, 90.3 FM Minneapolis, and operating translator, K294 AM West St. Paul, at 106.7 FM St. Paul. Support for this program comes from KFAI listener members and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. It is 1 minute and 20 seconds after 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and welcome for the afternoon news updates. Welcome, Andy Friedel, News Director. Good afternoon. This is your 1 o'clock KFAI News Update. I'm Andy Friedel. International Women's Day officially began 100 years ago with rallies to support the rights of women to work, education, hold public office, and to vote. International Women's Day was honored the first time in Austria, Denmark, Germany, and Switzerland on March 19, 1911. Long before it went international, women textile workers in New York City took to the streets on March 8, 1857 to demand better wages and safe working conditions. In 1909, in accordance with a declaration by the then popular Socialist Party of America, the first U.S. Women's Day was held. The holiday lasted just four years until the start of World War I, when socialist opposition to the war caused the commemoration to fall out of favor. Republican lawmakers are attempting to outlaw abortions after 20 weeks in Minnesota. The legislation introduced in the House and Senate yesterday would pose a direct challenge to existing laws protecting abortion and would likely face a weighty court challenge if enacted. The proposal is modeled after a first-in-the-nation law adopted last year in Nebraska that bans abortions after five months because supporters contend that is when developing fetuses feel pain. Opponents say there is no conclusive proof of that. A separate measure to block state funding of abortion for poor women also waits legislative action. Both House Speaker Kurt Zellers and House Majority Leader Matt Dean are co-sponsors of the fetal pain bill, along with House Ways and Means Chairwoman Mary Liz Holberg. On the House floor, Zellers oversees the debate. On the Senate floor, Senator Michelle Fischbach does the job. She is married to Scott Fischbach, the executive director of the Minnesota Citizens Concerned for Life. The Minnesota legislation addresses the possibility of a future legal challenge. Any lawsuits would be sent directly to the Minnesota Supreme Court, and the bill sets up a special fund to cover the costs of defending the law, if enacted. Hundreds of marching women in the Ivory Coast converged today near the bloodstained pavement where soldiers fatally shot seven unarmed female protesters during an all-women's march last week in an attack that has prompted a wave of criticism from around the world. A video obtained by the Associated Press and posted on YouTube captured the minutes before the attack last Thursday in Abobo. Many of the organizers of the deadly demonstration stayed home today fearing reprisal by security forces, but hundreds of others took to the streets in defiance on International Women's Day to express their disgust at the regime of strongman Lauren Gabagbo. Gabagbo has refused to cede power even though the country's election commission declared opposition leader Alassane Ouattara, the winner of the November 28th vote. Nearly 400 people have already been killed, most of them civilians who, vote, who voted for Ouattara. There is a performance and dialogue this afternoon at St. Catharines University to hear feedback collected in 2010 about refugee and immigrant views on gender equality. The program is held from 3 to 5 p.m. in Rowan Horse Hall on the St. Catharines campus. Those are all the updates for this hour. It's currently 35 degrees. For KFAI News, I'm Andy Friedel. Thank you, Andy. And now we will return to celebration of International Women's Day with our program entitled Women Singing. <laughs> 